anytime you have a large group of unmarried young men in your society, you have trouble. Absolutely. It's, you have trouble. Yeah. And uh, this has been very, very clear all throughout history. You, you could not design a system more perfectly calibrated to destabilize society. I know. It's almost funny, except it's tragic. But you're right. It, it couldn't it couldn't have been planned better for destruction and decimation of society if we had tried on purpose to do it. Well, and a lot of it needs to be laid at the, the blame of it. Need, a lot of it needs to be laid at the feet of women. Women are consistently voting for larger and larger government. Women consistently, in general, vote for open borders. If you look at the breakdown of votes, for nationalistic or sovereign movements in Europe, um, significantly more men than women vote for sovereignty and control over immigration, and significantly more women than men vote for uh, open borders and uh, uh, bigger and, and more government and, and open immigration and all that. I, I know. I, I have, you know, all of my, my liberal friends who know, some, some I haven't told because I'm getting tired of losing friends, but all of my friends who know I voted for Trump uh, aren't my friends anymore. They don't want to have anything to do with me. Um, like you're in league with the devil, right? I'm in league with the devil. I'm a racist. I'm, I'm going to be joining the stormtroopers uh, coming to get them in the night. And, you know, and these those, are mostly uh, female friends? Yes, all the female friends, yes. And um, they, all, they all believe in open borders and uh, welfare and the more immigrants we can take in, the better and et cetera, et cetera. Exactly what you just said. So I, I find myself. Why? Why? Why do they? Why? 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 You know, I I have to say that I was there myself a few years ago. I I wasn't awake enough to see what was really going on, and it's very easy to to move into that space where you just want to help people. You know. Well, sure, but I mean, why why does helping people mean moving them to your country? I know. I mean, I, why, why doesn't helping people mean helping them relocate in the, the vast expanse of Saudi Arabia or any of the other Muslim countries where I think they'd be much more at home and wouldn't be so frustrated? I mean, that there are women there, apparently, who can marry them. Yes. And, and in fact, we can help. I think the, the, uh, with the UN figures and things, we can help 12 people in place for every one that we move to the West. So it's actually more helpful to mm -hmm. help, help them in place than to move them um, to the West. And, but, you know, what can I say, Stefana? I, these are smart women, you know, they, they're college educated. Most of them have master's degrees. Um, well, that's why. I mean, they, they've just been exposed to so much more lefty propaganda, right? Yeah, and that, that could very well be. And you know, I feel for my daughter. She's been exposed to a lot of this propaganda. Um, I got to tell you, I mean, it's, I, I think I can speak for more than a few men in this area. I was a white male for many decades being told that I'm sexist, misogynistic, patriarchal, privileged, and that I need to have more respect for, uh, for women. I need to treat women better and all of that. And having been at the receiving end of massive shrapnel-filled cannonfuls of scorn and hostility from mm, certain segments within the female community, for being unenlightened and being a male chauvinist pig and this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you, this is not so much for you, but for the ladies out there, I got to tell you, it's a little frustrating seeing women welcome, after scorning white men for so long, seeing women welcome with, with open arms, a truly medieval doctrine with regards to women's rights. Yeah, I know. I know. It's unfathomable. I mean, that, 
I don't, I don't understand it. I don't either. I don't understand. Like I cannot, I cannot fathom it. Seeing the left, of course, oh, gay rights, gay rights, gay rights, fantastic. But then let's bring in a lot of people from Saudi Arabia. Are you kidding me? Uh, <laughs> like what? Where they hang <laughs> gays, literally. No, it's, it's literally like the, the, ho the hottest woman in town. You know, just, just won't date you because she heard you may have once said something harsh to a woman. It's not true, but let's say she heard that she won't date you because you got to treat women with respect. And you know who she ends up marrying? The guy who beats her up. Although I, that, that I don't maybe. understand it. I, I, I fundamentally, I can't, I can't, I, I can't fathom it. And, and, and you know, I don't know. <laughs> If you can either, but ah, on the larger cultural scale is where it's unfathomable to me. Um, I, I I don't understand why the folks who say they're for equal rights for women and gays and uh, minorities and Jews and Christians and all of that are bringing in people who trample on those very rights. It, yeah, it, why, why isn't all criticism of white men pushed back against as patriarchy phobia? Yes. <laughs> don't, don't be such a patriarchy phobe. <laughs> don't be such a masculine phobe. <laughs> we should, we should. Don't be such a penis phobe. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I could do that for about 20 minutes. So let's, let's keep, keep okay, moving okay. as best yes. we can. Yeah. But why? I mean, why? Why is it that uh, if there are criticisms of, you know, some pretty repressive aspects of us, uh, oh, that phobic, but, but why is it that when white males are criticized, nobody pushes back and like, that's all true. It's all valid. I mean, women couldn't try if they want, like a sat down and draw out one of these Kologi plans, they, they couldn't sit down and, and, and design a plan that would make men dislike them more than this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, it, it may well happen that women don't like the new things that are going on. Oh, oh, oh it's definitely. <laughs> there's, there's and then who, who are they going to run to? Yeah. Save us, men! Yeah. Yeah. And I got to tell you, <laughs> I mean, reading the comments, there are a lot of men who are like, nope. <laughs> no, thank you. Because you had family courts eviscerate us, you divorced our dads, you took them for everything that they had, you're sitting pretty on alimony and child support, and you, you badmouth men all the time, and you refuse to stand up for us, and we got thrown in jail more, and we got broken up more, and bad things happened to us, and you let everybody insult all the men in your life. Why the hell would we fight for you? Yeah, yeah. And, and now, I think I saw your tweet today, but I saw the article, um, before I saw your tweet about that class in Wisconsin for young men in college, essentially uh, brainwashing them about how awful their masculinity is. I think it was Wisconsin. Right, so if, just... if patriarchy is bad, why is criticizing patriarchy in Islam called Islamophobia? Because I think it's fairly safe that there, there might just be a shade or two more patriarchy in uh, Islam than there would be in the <laughs> contemporaneous West. Just, you know, I'm no expert, but just going from what I've read and heard, just a little, maybe just a coat or two more of paint of, of the patriarchy. Yeah. So, uh, but we, we all know. I mean, so I don't, the, the betrayal of, of the women, the, that is the downfall of the West, fundamentally. Men get it. And why do men get it? Because if there's going to be conflict, it's the men who are going to be drafted. Right? So women are like, oh, you know, we'll just get pregnant. <laughs> Whatever, right? I mean, so this this betrayal of the West uh, by women in, in particular, uh, I think is, I mean, women, out, it's still a democracy. Women live longer. They outvote men. They vote more reliably and they vote more towards the left. They vote more for open borders and bigger government. What can men do? <laughs> Yeah. Can't, can't. Right. I mean, I've had these messages from people in Europe saying, you oh, we would love to fight, but we can't fight everyone. We can't find the academics. We can't fight the government. We can't fight the women. We can't fight the media. We can't, like, 
at least the people who went off to World War II, they had the support of everyone at home. Oh, they did. Oh, gosh, I remember. Not that I was alive then, but what I've read about it, they did. Um, right. They did. Yeah, so this just of those will... Yeah, trending. Universities work to purge male students of their toxic masculinity. I wonder why that's a picture of a white guy. Why isn't that a picture of an imam? Because, you know, toxic masculinity, I, I wonder why they're not... Yeah, uh, campuses hosting training sessions, group meetings, lectures, and other programs to effectively cleanse what many campus leaders and left-leaning scholars contend is an unhealthy masculinity in young men today. Now, I don't understand that at all, because women have been in charge of raising men for the past two generations at least. So how could there be toxic masculinity left when single moms and daycare teachers and primary school teachers, women, Women have been raising men for two generations. If men are so toxic, I don't understand. See, if men are still toxic after women have been raising them for two generations, guess what, ladies? Masculinity is not environmental and can't be fixed. But if it is environmental, then men are toxic because they've been raised by women. In which case, more nagging probably isn't going to help the problem. Oh, and I also wonder, <laughs> if men are so toxic, gosh, you know, if men are so toxic, I, I'm sure that women are going to boycott calling the police when they get in trouble. Because, you know, you can't call a policeman because he's a man. He's so toxic. It's terrible. Yeah. Or a fireman. Yeah, right. or, or an aid worker. Yeah. First what aid. women need yes. to do is boycott stuff made by men. Just boycott it all. Running water, roofs, um, plumbing, <laughs> cars, just boycott it all. It's so, it's, it's, it's so toxic. It's got all this testosterone all over it. You could get poisoned. Just stay away from everything that men have produced. Just go. Go wherever it is. You can find something not invented or maintained or built by a man and be free of all this toxic masculinity that, I don't know, has bears not chew your boobs off on a regular basis because you're in the woods. <sighs> I mean, I, I, I get you don't need thanks every morning. Oh, man, thank you for building the civilization that keeps us safe. Just maybe not taking this giant menstrual dump on men on a regular basis. That's all I'm asking for, <laughs> just a little bit of a cessation of that. Or, good Lord... Most taxes are paid by men. You better boycott government money because that's also tainted <laughs> yeah. with masculine money. The money's got testosterone on it. You're going to get cuties. No welfare, no child support. And child support and alimony payments, the laws were passed by men. It's generally enforced by men. The men are arrested by other men. It's just a big giant cog in toxic masculinity. You've got to boycott not only the stuff that's built and maintained by men, but government money, the welfare state, alimony, child support, all masculine, all patriarchally enforced. Boycott it all. <laughs> yeah, I'll be waiting for that to happen. Yeah, it's a, it's a really weird dynamic. It, it, it's a very, very difficult, unfathomable dynamic, actually. It is chilling how easily most women can be turned against the men in their society. Mm -hmm. Like, whatever happens in society in the future, this can't be unseen. This can't be unpilled. Mm -hmm. There's no going back. And, and this, because there's the internet, because there's the manosphere, because there's men's rights movements and, and so on, this knowledge is spreading in a way that it never spread before. Yeah. That women are just turning, again, turning against white men and attacking and, and undermining and siding with the enemies and inviting in the enemies. And, and uh, yeah. this can't be unseen, whatever happens in the future. And that the cultures and societies. I'm sorry, what that, was that? I missed it. What? Well, and, and the cultures and societies that, that treat women like crap are winning. Mm -hmm. That can't be unseen either. Hmm. So, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, whatever is going to happen. I think men are going to have a very tough time in the future saying to women, yeah, let's give you a lot of political power because you did a great job with it last time. Yeah, you know, it's it's the funniest thing. I 
in my earlier years, of course, feminism was something very different many, many years ago than, than it is today. So I'm 60. So, uh, you know, it was, it was very different way back, way back yonder. But well, and sorry, no, no, you were sorry. I thought you'd finish your thought. Please go on. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to go on with that, but no, you go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that um, in in a, in a free society, the general social trends would be determined by you know, in by uh, ambition. Uh, by resource acquisition and resource management of wealth and, and so on and all of that. In, in a society, men would still have, I think, a little bit more influence um, because there would be, uh, uh, men would accumulate more wealth because men would be out there gathering resources for the women who were having children, you know, as in ye olden days. So I think men would have a little bit more influence uh, and I think it would be proportional uh, to the danger. But this sort of one for one thing where women have power without responsibility uh, that that I I don't know that that's going to be replicated in the future. E either way, that's not going to last. I mean, either some other ideology takes over and women's right. rights are out the window anyway, or um, you know, after a sort of bitter struggle, the the uh, <laughs> the people who reshape things in the future are going to have learned some kind of lesson. But uh, and I I don't blame women for this at all. I mean, it's natural. I mean, men men have had sort of massive consequences in political action for tens of thousands of years. You know, you, you get the wrong leader, he takes you to war, and you die like a dog in the ditch. You know, but but women have had political power for uh, really less than a century, uh, and they've used that political power to shield themselves in general from consequences. Oh, did you choose the wrong man? Oh, well, that's okay. You can divorce him and we'll just give you welfare or we'll get him to pay you alimony and child support and so on. Oh, you're dissatisfied in your marriage. You're going, oh, did you get pregnant out of wedlock and the guys run off? That's fine. We'll take, right? So women have generally used the state and I'm generalizing here enormously, but women have generally used the state to escape consequences when they can. And, and that is perfectly natural as well. It's not like women are bad or anything. It's just this is the way that things have uh, gone down for various reasons. So, uh, but that is this, this sort of betrayal, this, this feeling that um, you, you can't trust your women, that you can't understand where their allegiances are. You can't understand why your women treat you with such contempt while worshiping groups that would treat them a thousand times worse than the worst thing they've accused you of. And it's like, it's gross and very disturbing. And uh, again, it, it can't be unseen. Mm -hmm. And and there are some men now beginning to stand up, uh, which has been really beautiful to see and, and be proud of their masculinity and their manhood, just like they're Americans now who are proud of being Americans. So some kind of tide is shifting that way. It, it seems slow, but it it does seem to be shifting a bit. And, you know, maybe in part to folks like you and uh, some of the, the other folks who, who, who put a lot of their work and energy into bringing these facts um, to the wider audience. Yeah, and, and people need to shield their children from toxic academia. You know, I, I'm I'm acutely aware that uh, if, you know, if my daughter goes to college and she goes into some artsy field and things haven't changed by then, it may only be eight years from now, right? Um, I I know exactly what she's going to be taught about me. I know exactly what she's going to be taught about me what kind of person I am uh, as the result of my race, as the result of my gender. She's, but what is she going to be taught about the moral content of my character based upon collective concepts like yeah. race and gender? Yeah. Um, I, I would view that as extremely toxic. Oh yeah. Uh, a toxic yeah. substance to expose her to, you know, if she wants to become a doctor, then there's things, you know, she has to go through to, to become a doctor. And I think that's, you know, natural, but, uh, I'll tell you this. I, I mean, I will, strongly counsel her to stay away from 
the social sciences and the arts these days, they are not about education anymore. They're about yeah. brainwashing, programming, and you're basically being absorbed into an ivory tower kind of cult that is just teaching you to hate um, an entire segment and uh, race and gender in the population. And uh, I would view that as an extraordinarily... T and the, the letters I've gotten from people whose kids have gone off to, um, to college and, and have fallen down this this infinite well of of leftist hatred and and abuse and so on uh it is it's heartbreaking you know what, what happened to my little girl what happened to my little boy you know they come home i don't recognize them they're full of all these weird ideas they criticize everything about me i can't get through to them i can't you know everything that happened before has vanished i mean it is it's chilling it's chilling and i think we bloody well got to keep our kids away from these indoctrination camps yes well and and my daughter who hates the west you know her, her IB program and her uh, uh, degree in colonial literature, she hates the West. She thinks the West is just as good destroyed, better off destroyed. Um, uh, tragic. Uh, well, she doesn't, she doesn't really want to be free then, right? Because if the West is destroyed, women's rights are destroyed. They're, they're not around in yeah. the non-Western countries in particular. So yeah. she's just like, well, I tried this freedom thing. I don't really think it's for me. Um, and, and this, of course, is particularly enraging because, of course, the women say, well, we don't want to have anything to do with patriarchy. So we're going to work very hard, as hard as we can, as hard as possible to destroy the least patriarchal, most egalitarian society the world has ever seen and replace it with what? It, it, with just, what? it beggars the mind. It just really it does. does. So. Well, this, of course, it goes back to the old suspicion that people have had for a long time, and again, this is generalizations, but the suspicion that women confuse feeling for thinking, and that thus are more easily programmed to turn against their men. And their culture, and the culture that... I mean, did, did, <laughs> does she think she'd get to go to college in Iraq? Yeah, right. Well, she spent three months in Egypt by herself um, studying Arabic a few years ago, and uh, what? Could, well, she came out of that experience and said, I never thought I was racist before, but she was um, sexually assaulted every day on the street, men groping her every single day. She felt smothered. And but she still wants the West to be destroyed because yeah, I know. and she still wants people from Egypt to come. I don't quite understand. I don't. I don't. Does she miss it? it? <laughs> yeah. And she's a bright young thing, too. So. Uh, I, yeah. Wait, so she went, she went to Egypt. She was groped every day. Yep. And she's pro-migrant. I guess some are coming from Egypt. And she's against the West where I assume she was not groped every single day, at least not by white males. Right, right. Uh, you know, I, I, wish I, could ex I wish I could explain it. Stefan, I, does, does she miss the gro like, seriously? Does she miss the groping? You know, I, I think I'm going to have this conversation with her because I've, I've actually been thinking about it. Um, and I'm wondering what her experience in London is. Which well, is, it depends where she goes, right? Yeah, that's very true, actually. Yeah. Depends where she goes. Yeah. You know, I, I made this uh, argument, uh, I think, more than a year ago that if Angela Merkel is very keen on having all these Middle Easterners come in, it's no problem. She All she has to do is, is go and live in one of the no-go zones with yeah. a GoPro. Yeah. Somehow we're attached to her and then just broadcast stream for two weeks and just everyone can see what a wonderfully culturally enriched experience she's going to have. And uh, I think that would put a lot of people's minds at ease. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Wow. Now, so she, she has a problem with Western men and i assume that she thinks that western men are sort of patriarchal and misogynistic and this and that and the other oh but you know I, i'm gonna say no on that one and oh good and she's in oh, a, a lovely lovely relationship with with a very lovely hard-working um young man and uh, she appreciates and and loves her father and she's she's i i, I wouldn't say anti-feminist but she she hasn't bought into that bit at least Oh, good. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that. that that's yes. absolutely wonderful. Yes. But she still wants the West to die. <laughs> you know, everything's our fault, right? So it's the propaganda that she got in the education that I arranged and paid for for her. 
So. Uh, right. Yeah. It's kind so, of a bitter pill to swallow, too, it isn't is a, it? It's a very bitter pill to swallow. So. <sighs> well, if if yeah. she gets her way, um, if the West ever rises again, it will be a never forget moment that it was the treachery of women that had a lot to do with the downfall of the West. And that is something that I think we're all going to need to have a long chat about <laughs> at some point. But um, speaking of which, yep. I should get on to the next yes, caller, but I really, really do appreciate the call. Yep. And Thank you very uh, much. Uh, most enjoyable, uh, most engaging. And uh, I hope we can talk again at some point. Okay. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye bye.